There are a number of symbols on the wall. Some of them are supposed to remind us of patterns we've seen before. Going back to the very first geometric pattern on the show, which was the weird array of body parts that the White Walkers made. One of the things we learned from these cave paintings is that the White Walkers didn't come up with those images. They derived them from their creators, the children of the forest. These are patterns that have mystical significance for the children of the forest. We're not sure exactly what they signify, but spiral patterns are important in a lot of different cultures in our world and it makes sense that they would be in this world as well. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. So I got a lot of requests to explain the Children of the Forest symbols just because they've shown up so many times in the history of the TV show. The White Walkers make them, the Children of the Forest have all kinds of different drawings, but they seem to be the same couple of different symbols over and over on the cave wall. Everybody came up with that great joke that Jon Snow was secretly scribbling those on the wall to get Daenerys to believe him. But in reality, thousands of years ago, the children of the forest visited Dragonstone, lived here, and used the dragonglass to give to the first men to help fight the White Walkers. The drawings essentially depict the creation of the White Walkers, but you keep seeing this Fibonacci series symbol all over the place. You have these seven spirals coming out. There are a couple of geometric patterns that go back to the first episode, which is a slightly different pattern, this one here. And then there's another different one that has a leaf in the center here, which actually appears on the rock where Ned Stark beheads the first man who's deserted the Night's Watch. So the idea is that the children of the forest have recorded their story so that anyone like Jon Snow or Daenerys could walk in and understand who the others are and what their purpose is and what their connection to the children of the forest is because there are a lot of metaphorical meanings to this symbol and there are a lot of practical reasons. Some of the metaphors are a little bit different for each of the characters because a lot of you probably noticed the Fibonacci series, the golden ratio, or like the symbol that appears in nature like flower petals. So just like the Druids built Stonehenge to sort of commune with nature and use it practically as an astrological calendar, this symbol with the seven spirals of rocks arranged around it like the seven arms represents the cycle of nature. But practically, like if you've seen Westworld, the maze represents the metaphorical journey through the labyrinth of one's mind to consciousness is also a representation of the connection of the past, present, and future. So like Bran travels the pathways of the weirwoods to see into the past, the weirwood at the center, sort of like the world tree, represents the connection of all the different planes of existence. It's like Yagdrasil. So in a sense, the children of the forest worshiping nature, Mother Earth, this is also like a womb. So for Daenerys, for instance, it has different metaphors. Like she literally births the new dragon. She's reborn among salt and smoke. The Night King is born here. So in those instances, they invoke the power of the earth. It becomes a much more literal womb as they're reborn. Even though we only saw a little of it on the TV show, we know the children of the forest were using the Weirwood Caves as shelter. They were using it as a literal womb, hiding within the womb of their mother. There's a whole lot that you don't really get from this scene here, but the way that the producers explain it is that they just wanted to imply that there was prehistory here before the Targaryens ever came. The children of the forest told their story. Even though the symbols depict a story, the symbols themselves have greater meaning to a song of ice and fire. The idea that this is like one of those French caves where prehistoric man lived and painted on the walls, except in our case it wasn't prehistoric man, but children of the forest. It's supposed to be something that's very evocative of the thousands of years that have passed since these caves were first explored and the paintings were first made and also obviously something that's quite relevant to the current storyline because it's about how these two disparate peoples united to fight the common enemy. So on the TV show, Dan and Dave said that the White Walkers learned those symbols from the children of the forest so they keep drawing them it implied that it's more to mock them in a showing of that cycle of nature. So it's been day, the long summer. Now it is time for the long night. It is our time now. And more practically on the show, just to reference visually where they came from. So you could have looked at this way back when Mance Raider found it, always an artist, and thought, hey, you know, maybe they have something to do with the children of the forest. Maybe they come from them. And that was way back during season three. Always the artists. It's only horses. 
No men. You said there was dead crows. There was. How many men were here? About 300. So it all comes back to the idea that the real deity here that they might be worshiping is the earth. Like they say, the children of the forest worship the old gods. They worship the weirwood. The weirwood is the representation of the earth, the mother. So it does raise a lot of questions about the supernatural forces in Westeros because this whole time, especially in the books, we've known that there are two big sides to this. There's R'hllor, the red god that the red priests worship, and then you have the great other, the supposed deity of the others. All we really know of that is the inspiration that George R. R. Martin took was from Zoroastrianism. So you sort of have night, day, these two opposing forces that fight back and forth, the cycle of day and night. So it remains to be seen how literal the TV show gets with that, but they seem to be more metaphorical with it. Like, I think we're probably not going to get too many more explainers on the show about what these symbols mean. It's just meant to visually tie the White Walkers to the children of the forest and show where they came from. Like, this was the womb that gave birth to me. Just like this womb helped gave birth to the dragons as well as Daenerys being reborn. Most of the people that were watching this scene were talking mostly about Daenerys and Jon Snow coming together or talking about their relationship. But even if he doesn't understand it, what Jon Snow is trying to get across to Daenerys is, is that we're all connected. We all need to come together. So it's sort of a reminder of the idea of one earth, one organism. Like we all evolved on this. We're all connected in a fundamental level. But the idea of the cycle, the spiral, Daenerys said last season that she wants to break the wheel. They want to break the cycle so that it doesn't happen again. So that in another thousand years, there isn't another Jon Snow that comes along talking about the Night King. What's going to be different about this time? That's the big question. What was different about those previous times that caused the cycle to perpetuate? Maester Ebros even talks about the idea of many winters coming and going. Every winter has an end into summer. Every summer has an end into winter. So let me know in the comments, what do you think is going to be different about this time that's going to help them break the wheel, like break the cycle? You'll probably notice the problem with that metaphor too, breaking the cycle, because as long as planetos, or whatever you want to call the planet in Game of Thrones, cycles around their sun and their solar system, there will be day and night, there will be winter, there will be summer and seasons. So that might just be a place where the narrative breaks down a little bit. Like the metaphor doesn't apply to everything. It just only applies to Daenerys practically stopping everybody from fighting in Westeros. But what'll happen tonight is I'll post my episode 5 video. I was going to do a video about dragon bonding and warging, but I'll probably wait till next week to do that just because there's so much stuff that's happening in this episode. Leave all your requests for bonus videos in the comments below, and I'll announce a new winner to the giveaway when I post my episode 5 video tonight. All you have to do to enter, just be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. So while you wait for everything, you can click here for that episode 5 video. I'll add the link when I post that, and you can click here to learn all about Arya's dagger. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.